The Catalan referendum has been a hot topic of debate in the Spanish and Catalan media. For the last couple of months, the public has been continuously bombarded with the news of the symbolic referendum. The coverage has been polarized by both sides of the press, the Catalan media being pro-referendum and often pro-independence, and the Spanish media, the anti-referendum and always the anti-independence voice. The Spanish newspapers have repeatedly called the vote a local pantomime, a farce, a secessionist defiance, a sovereignty challenge and a separatist coup. But some of the coverage has been particularly imaginative. The Catalan government built an informative website where you could register to receive information about the vote using just an email address. This system resulted in fictitious characters such as SpongeBob SquarePants and Elvis Presley and Columbus managing to get themselves on the list. ABC newspaper ran a front page article about how the yellow cartoon character, king of rock and roll and global explorer, now had a chance to vote. Sadly, this was somewhat overinflated, as these characters could only find out where their nearest polling station was, and unless they had a valid ID, they were unable to shape the future of the Catalan state. The same newspaper, ABC, conducted in-depth interviews to gauge the opinion of the people. In one of the articles, they interviewed Maria La Piedra, porn star and ex-girlfriend of the former president of Barcelona Football Club, Joan Laporta. Laporta is a well-known pro-independent celebrity, and ABC obviously thought interviewing his ex-girlfriend on the political process was a vital contribution to the debate. The headline read, Joan Laporta told me Madrid stings, with her stating, I prefer the sexual to the fiscal paradises. Why bother interviewing a politician when you can have a porn star instead? Focusing on a more serious issues, the Catalan government is trying hard to involve the immigrant communities into the political process. Again, ABC published New Catalan Foundation promised paradise to Muslims who would vote for independence. The article reveals that this is just the opinion of the Spanish Minister of Interior, Jorge Fernández Díaz, who, to give some context, is a member of the Opus Dei and the son of a phalangist member of the military. In another article, they stated that the CIU, the party in power in Catalonia, wants to indoctrinate 500,000 Muslims for their secessionist plan. 500,000. ABC also published an article referencing historical euphemisms. They headlined, from Nazi labor camps to the Catalan right to decide, implying that just like the Nazis spoke of labor camps instead of concentration camps, Catalans are using right to decide instead of what ABC refers to as secessionism challenge. It resulted in a lawyer's association taking legal actions against the paper for inciting hatred. Their opinion pages also contained some interesting articles, one stating that Walt Disney's wall is a benchmark for Catalan President Artur Mas for Catalonia. Another claim that the problem of Catalonia is that neither Artur Mas nor Oriol Junqueras, the opposition leader, are alpha males. All Spanish newspapers have faulted the Catalan referendum for the lack of legal guarantees, while the Catalan media said it was organized as any other elections. The fact that the ballot boxes were made from cardboard gave rise to Madrid papers to mock the vote. El Mundo headlined a cardboard process. Also, many in the Spanish press, such as the newspaper La Razón, published that public school teachers had been pressured by the Catalan government to open the schools as polling stations for the referendum. The vote was possible thanks to nearly 50,000 volunteers, twice as much what the Catalan government asked for, 
some of these volunteers who are teachers who willingly open schools for the vote to take place. Two weeks before the referendum, El Mundo were busy publishing slurs about the mayor of Barcelona, Xavier Trias. They claimed that according to police sources, he had transferred 13 million euros from a bank account in Switzerland to an account in Andorra. Il Mundo reported that Trias was currently under investigation and that according to police sources, Trias transferred his funds to Andorra just after the former Catalan president, Jordi Pujol, went under investigation. The morning the article was published, the mayor of Barcelona, who also happens to be part of the CEO, the party in power in the Catalan government, held a press conference. He denied everything, and visibly upset, say he would take legal actions against the paper. A few days later, the presumed Swiss bank certified that Trias never had an account in their bank. Of course, Swiss banks are not known for their honesty and transparency, but it transpired that ABC newspaper also were offered the same information, but declined to ruin the story. As there was no corroboration about the source or that the Justice Department were indeed investigating him. Now, if Trias is corrupt to any extent, he should be investigated and prosecuted. But if he's not, then the timing of this mistake by El Mundo is at the very least suspicious. That same week, El Mundo also published a piece called The Euro of President Mas. The article falsely explains that the Catalan government has issued thousands of Catalan euros for a future Catalan republic. The fake money would have been issued in China and had messages like live free or die and images of a broken Spanish map. The journalist claimed he had tried the fake coins in the street and they worked. Hard to believe. On the 9th of November, the day of the referendum, the Spanish press offered buying from pages. In El País, Catalonia holds a useless 9th of November to define her place in Spain. The Catalan conservative La Vanguardia said Catalonia arrived at 9th of November with high expectations. The also Catalan El Periódico titled Dress Rehearsal with public prosecutor ask for identify those responsible for the vote. El Mundo, Catalan police will identify the school teachers of 9th of November. ABC, the public prosecutor will act against mass if the stations open. And the best of all, La Razón. 9th of November, no one consults them. The story of the other Catalans. It stated that we don't want independence, we want food. And Mas has indebted Catalonia in 130 million a week since he's in office. I hope they can prove that. Pro-referendum Catalan newspapers basically published the ballot. One of them marked pro-independence. The day after the referendum, the covers were also quite interesting. El País said, Mas, now for the definitive referendum. The Catalan La Vanguardia, a massive 9 of November, claims for a political solution. El Periódico de Catalunya, titled Nationalism Wins and Catalonia Live, a new protest day. El Mundo said, Mass sells a big success, his democratic fiction, and asks for a real referendum. ABC, first and disobedience, and La Razón, which seems to judge and condemn the Catalan president for the crimes of disobedience, perversion of the justice, and misappropriation. The Catalan's pro-referendum papers both headlined with 2.25 million, the participation number. And the pro-independence paper, El Punabui, said, that's how you do it. A study by the independent Catalan media research organization, MediaCat, showed that in Spanish TV debates about the referendum, 134 commentators were against holding the vote, while only 12 were in favor, and only three commentators were pro-independence. In the Catalan media, it was a bit more balanced. 55% of pundits were pro-independence, 38% against, and 7% were neutral. After the elections, 
ABC continued to publish false reports, including one about a Catalan citizen who had supposedly voted three times. The article featured three pictures of him voting in different polling stations as proof, but the article was a fake. People from the polling stations identified him and say he voted once and then took pictures of himself putting in the box the ballots of a couple of friends. Again, the paper never published a correction. The Catalan referendum and the Catalan movement for self-determination showed the Spanish media at its worst. However, there are journalists and some media that, despite the political polarization, managed to inform and serve the interest of citizens rather than politicians. El Diario.es is a good example, but there are many others, especially when looking at the non-mainstream media. They brought balanced articles, despite the tensions surrounding them. They did journalism despite all. <laughs>